I'm going to start out in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And you know throughout the book of 1 Corinthians, the, the people give Paul a really hard time about his credentials and he didn't look the part and so on and so forth and he wasn't worthy and he went through all of that commotion with them. Well, in the second letter, he writes to their commitment to, to not so much as to talk about his credentials, but to tell them what they have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to start out in chapter 3, and it says, Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we as some other epistles of confidence? commendation to you or letters of commendations from you. Ye are the apostles written in our hearts. Know and read all men. For as much as you are manifestly declared to the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not in me, but the Spirit of the living God, not tables of stone, but in the fleshly tables of the heart. So Paul is basically telling them, if you think we're here to pat ourselves on the back and to talk about our credentials, that's not what we're doing. We've come to tell you that the Lord Jesus Christ has saved your life and, in, and, and planted the Holy Spirit within you. You are now the epistle. You are now what people look at and what people are going to read. You are the book. They're going to look at your life and my life and they are going to judge us. And that's why it's so important that we have Christ on wherever we go and in whatever we do. Verse 4. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God who hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not the letter, but the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Have you ever, and, and this is one of the things that he still, to this day, tries to torment him with. And, and thanks to this church and the love of this church and the things that God has done in my life, have you ever got on the legal battle and all the legal documentations that are in that notes, that are in the pages of those, those uh, applications, it's like living under the law. For so many years, trying to live a legalistic life towards God, pretty close, come pretty close to destroying my life. And, and still I battle that at times in my life. And I was so thankful for the message that Danny preached this morning. Because this is, this is one of the things that was in his message. When you try to live under legalism, the letters and the legalism of that letter, it kills your spirit. There is no spirit when you're reading all these rules and all these laws and you're trying to follow all this stuff. And there is, it's like it just wears you out. And, and I've got one sitting right there that will tell you that it will kill you trying to live under all of those laws and all of those things that were written in the law of that day. And this is what Paul is trying to tell them. He goes on, he says, But the Spirit gives life. The Spirit of God sets us free from the law. The law was set, and we'll get into that here just in a minute, for them to live by. But the Spirit through Christ, when He saves us, it's not written in stone. It's written in our hearts through the Holy Spirit of God that sets us free from the law of the letter. Verse 7. But the ministration of death written and engraven in stone was glorious, 
so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit rather be even more glorious? So what Paul is telling him here, he's, he's saying that the law was written in stone. If that was glorious to you, the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit of Christ that sets you free from the law, shall it not be even more glorious than what that was? Amen. Verse 9. For if the ministration condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed that glory. Verse 10. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in that respect, but by the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away with was glorious, with much more which remaineth. Let me read it again. For if that which is done away with was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. So basically, Paul's telling them if you think that was good, and that was great. This is even greater. He's trying to get them to see that, that all that stuff has been done away with. He's trying to get them to see that it's no more a law on tablets. It's a law of the spirit and the heart. And this, this morning when Annie preached this and he said this, it just it blessed me so much. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which was abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until the day remaineth, the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil was done away with in Christ. But unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is still put upon their hearts. One of the biggest things in my life personally was the veil of reading. I tried so hard to lift that book word for word every day of my life. And it practically destroyed my spirit. Because every time that I would fail, there come the condemnation. There come the guilt. There come all those things of a legalistic life that I was trying to live. And I see so many people today that get caught up in that. And I, I wanted to come here tonight and I've prayed and prayed and prayed for God to help me this. To fully entrust in His grace. Not saying that you can go live a sloppy, sin-free life, but to fully entrust in His grace. That when I do trip and fall, I can get up, I can say, Lord God, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that, and get up and be happy again, and not beat myself to death because I failed. That is such, and when Danny was talking about that this morning, I wanted to jump, scream, and shout, and jump up out of that chair. And that's what they did. Even to this day, like Paul said, when Moses is read, there goes the thing. It can't, it can't be like that. <coughs> Paul spent countless letters writing to them about this stuff. It's all about Christ. It's all about the Spirit. It's about the Spirit of the Lord that bled, suffered, and died on the cross that came to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. That gets me excited to know that His grace is real. His grace is sufficient. I don't know what the thorn in Paul's side was, but whatever it was, God said, I got it covered. You don't worry about it. I got it covered. And that's one of the things that I really want to help people with is to try not to live that legal letter of the law.
And we all set those for ourselves. We have to do this, we have to do that, we have to do this, we have to do that. But there comes a time when we just got to say, okay, God, just like Mike prayed, God, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. But we'll just give it to you, and we'll go on and do what we do know how to do. And we'll let you deal with the rest of it. Amen?
thank Him so much because that veil that, that held on to me for so long, God is little by little by little ripping it apart. And one of the things I used to struggle with is when you would see people sinning and I'd think, how in the world can they say this? How can they do this? And then one day, God simply said to me, Am I judging them? When I judge you? Am I going to judge you? Because that stuff broke my heart. God's not going to judge me for what they do. Just like Pastor Dan said, it's my job to come up here and to feed you. It's your job whether you eat or not. And I'm not necessarily talking about anybody in this church. I'm just talking about people that I've dealt with throughout my life. We come here to be lifted up, to be edified, to be, to be one in Christ. Well, how are we supposed to do that with all the burdens that everything and that's in our hearts and our life that keep the veil on our heart that won't go away? How are we supposed to joyfully worship and open up to Christ and give Him our hearts when we're trying to carry all these things in our hearts? You can't do it. We are a free people. You can't carry those burdens and expect them to glorify God. To come in here and to worship Him and to praise Him like He deserves to be praised with all of that stuff on our hearts. And I'm slowly and slowly and surely coming out of this because when the tormentor comes, God had already been there. Don't let him get you to this one. And I did. And I praise God and I thank you for it. And when David preached that message this morning, I was squirming in my seat. The veil is gone. The law is gone. The legalism is gone. It's all about the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he set us free. I'm going to show you. Let's go to Romans. When it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. There is, say it with me, I'm so happy tonight, I can throw these glasses, I can break them, and I won't even care. Because today has been a good day for me.
You see, Christ He never gives up on us. He never gives up on us. He knows what eats in our hearts. He knows when we're going to be tempted. He's already been through my life. He knows every horrible sin that I was ever going to commit. But He still called me and said, Hey, Ricky Gray, come and preach my gospel. Why? I don't know. But I'm sure going to try my best to do it. Because He gave me freedom. If I mess up, that don't make me bad. That means I'm human. I messed up. If I didn't need Christ, where would I be? That's what He's there for. Amen. He's there that when we fall, He is there to pick us up and say, Come on, buddy. You messed that one up. Let's go to the next one. That's behind you. Quit living in the past. Yesterday's gone. Head up towards the mark. That's what it's all about. That's where the liberty is. We messed up here, but we can get up in tomorrow and do better. We can go out there amongst those people with our light shining bright for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we are free. We have the liberty to go do that. Paul said they did it because they were excited. They didn't have to live under the law anymore. All they wanted to do was preach Christ and Christ saves. You don't have to worry about that stuff anymore because it's gone. Just like Moses. Moses looked to God in his, all His glory and He shined like the sun. And it's like with Jesus. Moses' glory went away. But when we look at the Lord Jesus Christ, that glory is always there. That glow is always there. That glow should always be in us because He loves us. He died for us to put that glow inside of us. That's what it means to let your light shine. Amen. We don't have to live defeated. We've got a Savior that loves us. And He died for us. And He died to what? Somebody tell me. Right? But He died to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. That means when the scapegoat goes through the woods, we don't have to wait till next year to be forgiven of that sin. We can go straight directly to Him with no veil, nothing between us but God and Christ. And Christ says, God, they're forgiven. They belong to me. Amen. Amen. Man. We're free. You can be happy. You can give it to God just like Mike said. Lord, we don't know what to do. Just give it to you. We know you'll fix it. How many times in your life have you worried and you let things just crunch your heart to where you couldn't even live? When all you have to do is here, Lord. There it is. Now it's a happy day, brothers and sisters. What are we doing now? That's what you're supposed to do. You can ask my wife for years, years, and years.
You know when God confirmed it? This morning. You know how many times I asked God, do you want me to change this? Is there something else? No. You know why? Because I knew if there was, He would have put it right there. He would have laid it right on my heart, just like He laid this on my heart. And I'm telling you, I could have, I could have beat the best who that Clarence Brockman ever said or screamed when he preached that message. And I thank God for it. And I thank God for all of you. Don't suffer with sin anymore. If you sin, get rid of it. Go on, try to do your best not to do it. That's what it's all about. It's like the Yankee said this morning. Seven times seventy. That's in one day. So how many times does God forgive us? We're all at different points in our faith. I don't have to worry about them people out there anymore. Because they might not be where I'm at in my faith. But one day they may be. But in some days, God ain't going to hold me accountable for what they've done. That used to drive me nuts. Instead of being another way around, it was that way around. But it should have been this way around. I should have been shining for them. And I tried. But, like Jamie said, I was probably damning them left to try. Because they was out there sitting like crazy. Yeah, you've done it. I've done it. I have. But let's not wait on that. Let's get it to God. Let's get rid of it. Because the veil's gone. You and I can go straight to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And you know what? As soon as you get that out of your mouth, it's gone. That fast. And you're just as white as snow before you ever make it. Isn't grace amazing? Isn't grace amazing? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know what kind of meatheads we all going to be? Especially me. So let's praise Him. Take me to ready. Let's praise Him. Let's come in here with hearts of praise. To give Him glory. You're, because when you come in here burned down or you've sinned or you've messed up, you're taking His praise away from Him. Praise that He deserves. Give that stuff to Him and say, Lord, I'm sorry. And praise Him for what He's done. Lord, I personally thank you. This has been a really good day for me. And the more and more and the more that I learned to 